beyond the internal factors we discussed previously, there are still some other areas we have to deal with for potential cybersecurity breaches. Right, and then there's an issue with access. So I always go outside of healthcare first to look at cyber attacks, what's happening outside. So if you look at Target, the way they got in through Target was through an outside vendor. And their HVACs, and they, they weren't secure. Now, we all sign these business associate agreements, right? And then it says you're not responsible to make sure that your business associate does everything, follows everything. Nice and comforting until there's a breach, right? And on these, when there are interfaces and interactions and you're getting, giving away passwords, giving inventors access to come in to your network, I think it, it would be wise in this situation to verify. Tell me exactly what your procedures are. Tell me exactly how these passwords are protected. Role-based access, audit trails, etc. So you have to know who's coming in and out. Some EHR vendors tout their locally hosted systems as being more secure than cloud-based systems. Do you agree? That depends on the cloud, really. Because the cloud really just means it's still a server. It's just where is the server located. And there are very clear standards, and you can ask your vendors that. Where is your server? Is it in a center? Right? They have some of these servers sit in centers. Now, of course, some people won't tell you. But they at least can tell you the standards for what their centers are. It requires biometric identification for access, for example. Some of them have. I know there's, for, there's a server farm in Rochester that's protected from you couldn't drive a, a truck up to it and, like, let a bomb go off or something. They're, they're barricaded. But those are, those are rated. There are different levels. Those centers are rated on what kind of security they provide. It's pretty straightforward. I did an audit with a with a practice, and their EHR vendor. They were not in. They were cloud based, but they were, their their server wasn't in a secure place. So, and they, I remember they didn't have any backups going. That vendor, EHR vendor, no back, no back, no. It is scary, but it's, those are simple questions to ask, and it. During an interview, oh, not your vendor. Tell me your cloud server. Tell me that you've signed in theory. You've signed business associates agreements with them. They're with, they're at least liable. Business associates are. It's the medical device manufacturers that aren't liable. In the same way. Well, just how do you vet your vendor security measures? Ask the questions. Where is the protected health information located? Is it encrypted? Do you have a backup plan? Have you tested your backup plan? If you just go through the simple questions, you're going to hit the big holes in your vulnerabilities. And they still, like I said, it's still very practical. They do the same thing in preparing for ransomware and protecting against. You're doing the same thing. You do a flow of your data. And you see where your data is flowing or where, the, where there are openings, then you know that's what I have to protect. Ransomware has been an issue for many hospitals, many organizations in healthcare, but strong backup measures can often offset this risk, no? With the appropriate amount of backup on different servers, a ransomware attack would be tough to really grab everything if I had things appropriately backed up and separated. You couldn't do, for example, ransomware in any data I hold because it's so it, it's backed up in so many different places, right? And be like, all right, well, I got that. I could recover. You should test that. How long would it take to do a recovery? Now, that's an onerous task in itself. That's a half day in any small practice. I got to segregate. I got to do it offsite. I got to do it in a different server, and I have to try and recover my data. How fast happen. But at least you know.